Right. So uh, let me check through my chat if there's any questions about um, current. I don't see any question right now. I see some asking about the crit rating and damage versus the base damage, and maybe I can better explain that why why I go that route if you if you don't mind. Sure, go ahead by all means. Okay. Um, damage rating is first; it's on every hit, whereas crit's not. Plus, there's some things that happen with damage rating that don't happen with crit damage, uh, and that comes from like your stats, like your fighting power. My fighting power gives twenty five percent, so. If you go, uh, I take a damage rating and I apply it, and then I get double because of the coefficient. So say I take, I had 1,000 damage rating out of my costume, and then I double that because of the coefficient, so that's 2,000. Plus I get 25% bonus of that because it's a fighting power. So all of a sudden there, now we're 2,500, and then I also get another 10% bonus because my strength gives 10% physical. So that 2,500 times 1.1 is going to be, I don't have my calculator up, but um, <clears throat> it's going to be about 2750, I think. Yeah, 2750. So that's, uh, you can see on every hit, 2750 versus, say, 4,000 damage rating that you can get on your costume for crit damage, but that's only on your other hits. Now, also, when you crit, that damage rating then gets another 50% double, whereas the, the, the crit damage... Is now it'll get double too because of the coefficient. So I'll, I'll get 8,000 crit damage, but I would get that extra 50% on that that 2750 that we're talking about. So it's going to push that up to almost 4% on crits. Plus it hits everything on the normal attacks. If that makes sense to everybody, hopefully, or kind of describe that. But uh, base damage right now, for actually for most heroes, is going to end up being better than crit damage. I don't run any crit damage on my build at all. Yeah, I can see the thought behind it. I must honestly say I cannot follow the math entirely, but um, we're going to have this up afterwards, and uh, people, we can watch it uh, back again. I definitely will do that, so uh, thanks for answering that question. Um, without further ado, there is another question from Sli uh, Slixen. Yeah. yeah, it's the same. The damage rating is, is, is better, as you, uh, as you explained. So um, without further ado, I would like to, uh, to get Haka into the mix. And I currently have him at 50, and uh, I leveled him, t I think, two days ago, uh, from about late 30s to 50. And um, so I know a little bit more about Hawkeye than I know about Black Panther. And uh, so, what are your thoughts on Hawkeye and his current state uh, in the game? Um, Hawkeye's kind of a middle of the road hero. You know, he's not going to excel at anything, and but he does some decent damage. He's got a couple nice little tools. And uh, he he does some some okay things, you know. He's never he's not a he's not a top tier hero at all. But you can see, you know, he can do some nice AOE damage with uh, the explosive arrows and stuff. He can also do some pretty decent single target damage with just his basic attacks. And he also has now other builds will run the wave of arrows, which is another nice uh, both AOE and and single target if you're close enough damage attack. Um, just a quick word to my viewers, um, for anyone who just jumped in later, I'm here with Liloric, which is uh, known on the forums for his uh, in-depth uh, details on builds about mostly Black Panther, but also Hawkeye and also Scarlet Witch. And uh, I have the honor to have him on my uh, on my stream for for tonight for uh, for a couple of, uh, I don't know, hours, but at least uh, I got him on my show for one hour already and I hope to add another one. And uh, we're going in-depth on, uh, we have been through Black Panther, we're going to go in-depth on Hawkeye, and maybe we're going to see a little bit of uh, Scarlet Witch, which is one of my favorite heroes, so I'm looking forward to that. So um, if you have any questions, please post them in the chat, and uh, I will try to answer them. And um, yeah, there is another one question that I forgot. Before I forget it again, I will ask it. Um, you've been on the whitelist, right? Have you, you've been invited to the whitelist test server. How was that? Yeah, I did. I, I tested in the whitelist. Uh, it was really, really great. It was nice to uh, work with the devs closely, and I, I really got an appreciation of how much they do. It was not uncommon to see a dev pop up at 2 in the morning and ask what somebody thought about something. And Their, their devotion to this game is, is pretty good. I can't imagine how many hours they're actually working on a regular basis. But And they're very, very receptive to feedback. And they are to the whole community, too. 
uh, probably more than any other development team I, I've ever been around in another game. So it, it was a lot of fun to get that uh, kind of close uh, interaction with them. Cool. So um, um, you basically, yeah, you signed up and you got picked out because obviously you did a lot of uh, research on, on the game. So that's why you, you've been picked. Um, um. Do you think they should do that more often, or do you think it's better just to let the whole player base on the test servers? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think they need both. Um, I think the focused group helps them really uh, not get inundated with, with it, too much feedback at one time, and to find you know kind of the bigger issues. Now, when everybody gets in there, though, that gives a lot of people to help find the stuff that slips through, because um, even on the the whitelist testing, they were changing the build every day. So you would find oh. that with your hero, you had to go back in and, okay, what did they change? Because they don't give you a list of what changed. It, you know, it'd take a lot of time to, to write that up every day, a patch note type thing. So occasionally a dev would come on and tell you, we changed this, check it out, you know. But a lot of times you had to check and see, did they change this bug that I said that they checked? So you'd go in and, and test the same thing kind of daily um, to see what happened. So I spent a lot of time in the training room. Uh, I do on live too. This is kind of my home, is a kind of joke <laughs> where we're at here. So, um, but um, you do uh, you do get a lot of testing in over there, and like I said, a lot of changes. So it's really good to have then the whole group, the bigger groups, come in, so they can really just kind of uh, try to pick out any of the little things that some of the individual whitelist testers might have missed, or you know, throughout that, because you not given a lot of time to test things and you have to retest the same things over and over in a lot of cases. Cool. Thanks on your uh, comments there. Um, Hawkeye, yeah, he's uh, like you said in the middle, he doesn't really excel um, but he has some nice features so we're gonna go into there right away. Um, I'm opening up the skill tree and the first question that I have is gonna revolve around the basic attacks again because there is this quick arrow and the rate of fire is the same with each basic attacks on this one, it was the same on Panther. Um, and the question for me that I had is, uh, if you talk about the damage coefficients, if I remember correctly, uh, it was 0 0.5 on the Twin Arrow and 0 0.3 on Triple Arrow. So there is a point where Twin Arrow actually uh, overrules Triple Arrow in damage. Um, is that correct? Yeah, it, it does. Uh, twin Arrow is actually the better one, even though Triple gets the better arrow. Uh, twin gets a lot more out of the damage coefficients and things like that, so it's also better for proccing your uh, passive Masterful Archery, which is also a lot more damage. So it's pretty consensus right now that the Twin is better than Triple, although some people do still like Triple because of the extra numbers and stuff. And at lower damage levels, it probably is better. So as people first get it, they're like, oh, it's doing a lot more damage. But as gear gets better, Twin really starts to outshine it uh, towards the end game. Cool. So you're actually saying that it's not only the damage coefficient that gets better on Twin Arrow, but also it activates uh, the passive's power more often. Yeah, because... You know the 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 proc uh, the coefficient also determines how often you you have proc chances go off things that uh, have a chance to do something. The coefficient modifies that a little bit so that you know you're not just using the the fastest attacking speed just to make all your your procedures go off quicker. Okay. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. So that how how do you test which is better? Then is it just respec and just see the numbers, or I, th I find that really hard. Um, well, it's a little bit of both. It's it's some uh, pen and paper calculations, you know, as far as once you know the co the the coefficient, and then you know you you kind of figure that out. You could do that, and you can also, you know, of course you you can't just take the pen and paper and say this one's better. You do you do do some testing. So um, I've actually sat in here, and these dummies take a long time to kill, but I've I've timed them out just to see which one actually uh, will end up killing faster. So okay, so that's. Um, so you just hit one over and over until it's dead, and then you try it another way, and that's how you see which one is the most damage. Yep, you you, you can do that. It, it takes a long time, but you can do that. And of course, there's a little bit error, but they have so many hit points that it's really uh, yeah, kind of you're really going to get a pretty good idea. Yeah, iron but out the error a little bit. Yeah, by the longer yeah. the fight takes. Absolutely, but it, it'll take a while to beat one of them down. That's for sure. <laughs> okay. How many have you killed then already? 
Oh, I haven't counted, but I had a I posted a screenshot the other day because a lot of people on the forums were complaining about the loot, and I'd been in testing a lot with Black Panther, so I posted a screenshot with all of these dummies gone that I had killed with Black Panther, and I said the loot was horrible. <laughs> I killed them all and got nothing. I actually remember that. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize you actually killed off them, but um, that's great. Cool, let's continue. Um, I personally have Precise Aim maxed and Verbatim Arrowheads maxed, and only one point in Piercing Arrow, uh, and Master Archery maxed as well. Um, is that is that the way to go? Well, um, you definitely want to max Precise. Vibranium, I only do one point um, with the Brutal Strike. The reason is, is Brutal Strike doesn't give you very good returns, unfortunately, um, for your points. It basically, when I when I when I calculated it for my build. To go from one point to twenty points, so spend those nineteen points. I gained on average fifty damage per hit, so that's really not that much uh, when you factor that in. The problem with brutal strike is it's a percentage of your crits that become brutal. Yeah. So if you get, you know, thirteen percent of your crits become brutals, but you're only critting forty percent of the time, all of a sudden you're dropping that down to to two or three percent on the brutal strike chance. So it's a really hard one. Uh, piercing. I would probably go more in. Um, I run tan in it, uh, and I'll show you the reason why. I have to respect mainly. again. It's mostly with explosive arrow, but uh, and then masterful I max out because that's that's really a good extra damage bonus. But piercing um, is not only good for your 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 single target shots. So like if I come over here and I shoot this dummy here. Oh. You can see it piercing through, yeah. but it's also very important for uh, like the explosive arrow that I was showing you earlier, because that can pierce too. And when it pierces, see there, that was a single shot and it hit just those once, but watch when it pierces. Wow. wow. That pierced three times. It hit there, it, and it hit on the second dummy, and on the back wall. So it hit this thing three times with that amount. So you definitely want to be able to pierce a, a fair amount with that. I don't max it because I don't have the points. But I, I do put at least 10 points in to try to get a pretty good pierce chance. Cool. Yeah, one thing that, uh, that, that you said, that's something that I only realized this week, uh, so I want to put some emphasis on that, is that the Brutal Strike is actually just a percentage strike. So um, um, and there is not many items or skills that give it, but uh, you need a really high crit chance to make a Brutal Strike chance really worth it. And then again, it comes, it comes with an Edge of Infinity. Um, for example, on a Hulk, which you can almost get like 100% crit on that, that Brutus Strike would actually be good for him. But um, right. yeah, there's something that, that you should realize. I didn't realize that until this week because I'm not at that high level of the game as you. But uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's it's a uh, it's pretty hard to uh, make that passive worthwhile. Like I can get more bang for my buck out of out of points spent elsewhere. I put one point in it for sure because you know you get all your ranks. You should always put one point in every passive, even if it's horrible. Uh, because you get you know the free ranks with your cosmic gear and your medallions and stuff. But. Yeah, well, that's a uh, that's a good thing to uh, to realize that uh, well, if, you, uh, if you have the cosmics and you have like one or two uh, medals or artif no, one medal and two artifacts that give plus two ranks, even one point can give you two up to like seven or six at least. So uh, it's a good thing to know. Uh, pinning arrow, uh, do you find use for that? And and then and then you can talk all about wave of arrows because that's interesting. I think wave of arrows versus explosive ones. Yeah, that's kind of the the dilemma for any Hawkeye player is that too. But pinning arrow actually has the chance to do a lot of damage if you uh, go, build a base damage build and uh, you do a lot of that. It, it can do a lot of damage for a single shot for somebody that didn't want to go wave of arrows or explosive arrows but wanted a good spirit spender, that's actually not a bad one to, to, to look into. Um, it uh, can do a lot of damage once you get your damage rating up, but it's not something anything I invest in because I, it's just not the build that I choose. But Wave of Arrows, though, is really strong. Um, it's can uh, It gets better the higher the rank. It's one of those that you got to have a really high rank, and at 40, it shoots up to 18 arrows, which is really big. And... Uh, it shoots them out in a big fan, and let me see if I've got. Let me grab an item here real quick with it. Um, yeah, is is the fan the 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 area actually increasing per arrow, or is it more arrows in the same fan size on higher levels? Higher level. Um, 
it's a little bit of both. It goes out to, it's about a 120 degree angle. Um, 